Good evening from the Mount Calvary Baptist Church, Legal, General Santo City, Philippines. Uh, we don't know when everything's going to open up. I just, I know this, the, the, uh, the government said the churches can open up, but only those that are above 20. Well, our church is made up of most of our people are below 20. So we're going to wait right now until uh, further notice. We'll wait on the Lord. Uh, it's kind of hard if, if the children and teenagers can't come but only their parents. And so we'll wait on the Lord. The Bible says wait on the Lord. And we don't know anything right now. Someone told me this years ago, when you don't know what to do, don't do anything. That's a good principle for you in your life. Sometimes you have marital problems when you don't know what to do. Don't do anything in your business. When you don't know what to do, don't do anything. What do you do? You wait on God. Why try to do something when you don't know what to do? So that's what we're doing here. We don't know what to do, so we're just waiting on the Lord. David Jones is going to come, and he's going to lead us this time. And you sing along with us here today at the cross. Kita ni pakan tahun at Calgary, at Calgary. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing that it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. Mercy there was great and grace was free at Calvary. By God's word at last I seen I learned. Then I trembled at the low I spurned. Till my guilt is all imploring and to Calvary. Grace was free, heart and there was multiplied to me. There my birth is hope on liberty at Calvary. Now I give to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now my rapture soul can only sing on Calvary. Great and grace was free, pardon there was more than by to me. There my pearl is hope on liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan, oh, the grace that brought it down to man, oh, the mighty hope that God is man at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was more than by to me. There my birth is hope on liberty at Calvary. Amen. Ato ni pa kan taon. Blessed Redeemer. Padayon sa pagdaisik ng tedra sa gino. Sabay sa pagkanta. Blessed Redeemer. At Calvary's mountain, one grateful morn, walk Christ my Savior, weary and worn, praising poor sinners dead on the cross, that He might save them from endless loss. Blessed Redeemer, precious Redeemer, Seems now I see him on every street, wounded and bleeding, poor sinners pleading, blind and unheeding, dying for me. Father, forgive them, thus he did pray, in while his life blood. Lord has the way, praying for sinners, 
while in such war, no one but Jesus ever loved so. Blessed Redeemer, precious Redeemer, since now I see Him on Calvary's way, wounded and bleeding, poor sinners bleeding, blind and unheeding, dying for me. Oh, how I love Him, Savior and friend, how can my praises ever find that? Through years unnumbered on heaven's shore, my tongue shall praise Him forevermore. Blessed Redeemer, precious Redeemer, sings now I see Him on every sweet, wounded and bleeding, for sinners bleeding, blind and unheeding, dying for me. Amen. Thank you, Davy. Blessed Redeemer. What a what a tremendous song. What the gospel that's in that song. You know, a lot of songs today, they mention God one or two times, but it's like a love song. All the greatest love song is the love song of, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But thank you for that song, Blessed Redeemer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to bless our service here uh, tonight, our Sunday night service. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you now for your goodness. We ask you that you would use your word Lord, your word would encourage people. Your word would cause people to get closer to you. Lord, we don't need more knowledge. We have a lot that we already know. We need to get close to you, Lord, and we need to become more Christ-like. Help us to be Christ-like in our lives. Help us to follow you, Lord, and love you and honor you and Tell others about you. Lord, there's people tonight that are hurting and they need your help. I pray, Lord, they'd learn to get on their knees. They would learn the secret of getting help and that's coming to you. Lord, our help comes from you, not man. Now, you use people a lot of times to help us, but we believe our help comes from you. You bless the preaching, the singing, everything that would take place here tonight. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And just in a few minutes, just in a few minutes, uh, let me go back to this. Let's wait on the Lord about our church services. We're going to start as soon as we can. And uh, just be patient. We want to start now, but we want to start at the right time. Uh, just in a moment, Davey's going to come back and he's going to lead another song about seeing the Lord Jesus first, and then the Maj I think it's the Majesty Choir will sing for us here tonight. And after the special, Ryan Nosolas, he uh, will come and speak to us here tonight. A Tracy Cat driver invited Victoria Salas to church. 20 some years ago. And she came to our church because of the tricycat driver. She came to our church and she got saved. And she started bringing her grandchildren. She started bringing her grandchildren. And one of her grandchildren, child, will be speaking tonight, and that's Ryan. Be speaking tonight. There's another grandchild that's in Cambodia, Rin Rin. Ryan's older sister, she's in Cambodia as a missionary. God used that tricycle driver, and God used that uh, grandmother, and God is, is using Ryan. Started coming to our church when he was nine years old. He was nine years old. And then he brought his mom and daddy. 
and his mom and dad has been in our church. They've been here almost 20 years. Almost 20 years they've been here. He's an assistant pastor of Mount Calvary. He's over, uh, he's an assistant pastor. He's over our public school ministries. He's over our ministry, uh, 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 media ministry. With, he has a lot of people that help him with that, but he's over that. He's over our King's Kids, our children's clubs on, on Wednesday night. He teaches in our Bible college, and he'll be a blessing to you tonight. And I think he's gonna be speaking about uh, some things about Mount Calvary. But he's been here for about 20 years, so he understands a lot because of that. And uh, David Jones, you come, and after this, we have a special. And then Ryan Nasolis, uh, he will come and speak to us here tonight. My Savior, first of all. Let's sing this together. My Savior, first of all. When my life work is ended and I cross the swelling tide, when the bright and glorious morning I shall see, I shall know my Redeemer when I reach the other side, and His smile will be the first to welcome me. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, and with Him by His side I shall stand. I shall know Him, I shall know him by the print of the nails in his head. Oh, the soul thrilling rapture when I view his blessed face and the luster of his kindly beaming eye. How my whole heart will praise him for the mercy, love, and grace that prepare for me a mansion in the sky. I shall know. Him, I shall know him, and with him by his side I shall stand. I shall know him, I shall know him, by the prints of the nails in his head. Oh, the dear ones in glory, how they beckon me to come, and are parting at the river I recall. To the sweet vales of Eden, they will sing my welcome home, but I long to meet my Savior first of all. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, and with Him by His side I shall stand. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, by the print of the nails in his head. Through the gates, through the city, in a robe of spotless white, he will lead me where no tears will ever fall. In the glad song of angels, I shall mingle with delight, but I long to meet my Savior first of all. I shall know. Him, I shall know him, and with him by his side I shall stand. I shall know him, I shall know him, by the print of the nails in his hand. This time I may not be such a special.
Mayong gabi sa tanan and happy anniversary Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Dili ta maglangan mo adto ta sa pulong sa Ginoo karon nga gabi. Abrihan nato tong Bible sa 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 18. The Bible said, "In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus." concerning you. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, I believe God is telling us here na dapat kita makatuon ta mag, mag, mag say of thank you sa iya. I believe na si Jesus Christ nagasulti ka na to, nagatudlo ka na to, to be thankful. And let's be thankful in everything. Bisan gamay man na siya nga bagay, or dako na siya nga bagay, dapat mahimu tang mapasinalamaton diha sa gino. Ingon siya, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, since it's uh, it's our anniversary, um, I would like to speak karon nga gabi regarding sa, sa impact sa Mount Calvary Baptist Church sa ako ang kinabuhi. So most of this will be a testimony. Okay? Somebody told me na kung mag-preach ka, unya, most of it is testimony. Ang tawagan na is preachimony. So you may call it that way, but that's what I'm going to do karon nga gabi. Okay? So we will just open a few verses, but most of this will be my testimony. And the reason na nung karing verse ang ako ang gipili for tonight is after ko nag- nag-meditate o nagunahuna since ka anniversary sa church, all I can think of or all I can say back diha sa Diyos since it's our anniversary is, is thank you. I'm thanking God nga na ay Mount Calvary Baptist Church. I'm thanking God nga a Mount Calvary Baptist Church nga ay dako nga part sa ko ang kinabuhi. So, I'm thankful for this, for this church. So tonight, Uh, I'm gonna speak about this simple question nga kong nahuna-hunaan since I found out nga, nga anniversary na to. And this question is mauna siya. What if there's no Mount Calvary? What if there's no Mount Calvary? I don't know kung nahuna-huna ni Kaniana. But when I found out na anniversary na to kung Sunday, I started thinking, what if wala Mount Calvary? Usa ka nga ko ang kinabuhi karon. So what if there's no Mount Calvary? Ugmani ako na hunan na. Number one, ako ang childhood. I started coming here sa Mount Calvary Baptist Church. I think I was nine or eight years old. I can't really remember the exact date. But I know the year. It was year 2000. And start make add to drink. Probably it was ano na, at the end na sa, sa year 2000. We started coming here year 2000. And probably nine years old ko ato. So that means sa akong childhood, naay part ang, ang Mount Calvary. But what if wala Mount Calvary? What if there's no Mount Calvary? Usa ka nga ko ang childhood. So, dili gina ko ma-pinpoint unsa ang mahitabo sa ko ang kinabuhi. Kay siyempre, lahi man ako ang experience the, na man ang Mount Calvary na was a child. But uh, I was just thinking, what if wala ba? What if wala? Possible, morning mahitabo. Possible ang ako ang childhood will be boring. So, nga nang nakaingon ko, boring. Okay? Um, wala akong nagasultin na kung wala ka sa Mount Calvary itong bata ka, boring imong childhood. I'm not saying that. This is a personal Uh, karing testimony. I believe, kung wala ko sa Mount Calvary, or kung wala yung Mount Calvary, my childhood would be boring. Because I found it, karing, I find it karing fun and enjoyable na magtuon sa pulong sa ginawa as a child. And as I look at those children na ginaminister na, na to, sa ato ang children's church, sa ato ang uh, different children's classes, I find, uh, makita na ko sila nga karing nag enjoy sila sa pagtuon sa pulong si Gino. So that's why I considered na kung wala ang Mount Calvary, my childhood 
would be boring. There will be no children's program. Para sa ako, ah, kung bata, katong bata ko, kung wala yung topic. There will be no children's program. Siguro ang buhato na ko, kung bata ko, masigira kong dula, masigira kong dula. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay? Kaya ang kids, ganahan, hindi sila mag, mag-play. But at the same time, nindot po nga, nag-play ka or nag-enjoy ka while learning the Bible. So, f- I find it a boring ang akong childhood kung wala ang Mount Calvary. No children's program, no junior camp, no children's ministry, no children's uh, uh, classes uh, regarding sa, sa pagtudlo sa Bible. So, for me, if there's no Mount Calvary, my childhood would be boring. Imagine my, my childhood, wala ko'y Bible knowledge. None. Zero. Okay, ma-remember na ako sa previous nga religion na ako ang ginaatinan, katong bata pa ko. Yes, nagasimba mi, but every time mo ato mi rito, igo rami matulog or magtanga because we don't understand anything na ginatudlo sa, sa katong naga, nagatudlo sa katong nga religion. So, for me, if there's no Mount Calvary, ang akong childhood, wala dito ko'y Bible knowledge ni anak. Possible, wala ko'y verses nga na-memorize. There's no Mount Calvary. And you know what? Importante kaayo ang mag-memorize ang verse. Because there, maabot ang point sa mga kinabi that those verses, kinahanglan kaayo ito nimo. Those verses will help you, will guide you. Kay pulong mo na sa Diyos. So ang akong childhood, if there's no Mount Calvary, wala ko'y Bible knowledge as a child. Wala ko'y verse nga ma-memorize. And I believe there will be no good influence sa akong kinabuhi. I'm not saying uh, tanan na taong na nakapalibod sa katong bata ko were bad influence. I'm not saying that. Wala akong nag-aingon nga akong parents or bad influence ako. Ah. They did a great job sa pag-raise sa mga mag-igsoon. But my point is, there will be no extra nga good nga influence kung wala ang Mount Calvary. Nga naman, ma-remember na ko itong one time I was in junior church. Bago pa lang ito na-build ang two-story Sunday school building na ito dito sa ito ang uh, property. Itong uh, daan na itong Sunday school building. And uh, nag-classy mi ato sa first floor. Ma-remember na ko ang salog ato. Dili pa ito siya tiles. Rough pa ito siya. And then, naibintana pero wala ka rin wala pa yung jealousy. Nothing is ambod gani. Kung na, wala pa ito yung pintura itong na time. Bago lang ito siya na-build. And ito yung nagkaroon ng children's class. And I remember my teacher. Okay, pag ingon ako yung pangalan, most of you will, will know him. Karang teacher na ako sa junior church. Nagtudlo siya o isa ka lesson from Romans chapter 8. Kung asa, gisulti dito na nothing can separate us from the love of God. And I can remember that lesson until now. And I can still remember the, the illustration na iyang gipakita atong uh, uh, atong uh, adlaw. And that helped me the rest sa kong kinabuhi. That influenced my life in a good way. So if there's no Mount Calvary, there will be no good influence. No karang extra nga maayong influence sa kong childhood. Katong uh, illustration niya was this. Nagkuha siya og isa kabata. So ang iyang ginatudlo is nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nagkuha siya og isa kabata. Hindi na ano siya, nga, ang gitudlo sa Bible, nga walay bisan nun siya makaseparate sa tuwa sa gugma sa Diyos. So ang game mo niya, yung gigakos ang bata. Gigakos niya, gmayo, guot kayo yung pagkagakos. Niya, all the kids were laughing, bisan katong bata na yung gakos, nagkakatawa, and then nagtawag si isa kabata. Okay, for example, ikaw si Death. Okay? Itry siya kuha, gikan sa kuha. So grabe ang bira-bira atong isa kabata, ginatry niya kuha, ginatry niya separate tong bata nga ginagakos sa among sa among uh, junior church teacher. And you know what? Dili niya kaya birahon. Nagtawag na po siya isa. For example, ikaw, uh, ikaw ang height or depth or principalities or uh, any other creature there's kalibutan. He's, he point out, that was just a simple illustration, but he point out that nothing can separate me. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And you know what? Growing up, yes, I, I failed many times. Yes, growing up, I made a lot of mistakes, a lot of wrong decisions. But you know what? Tungod na nga lesson, it helped me to get back up. It helped me nga dili ma discourage. It helped me nga there's always hope diha kang Jesus Christ because nothing can separate me from His love. And pag maka pag makahimok og mga failures, 
makahimo ko mga mistakes sa kinabuhi. Uh, nine times nga murag ma padulong na ka sa, sa depression, padulong na ka sa, sa point ng asa, masuko sa mong kaugaling. But I will um, I always ko ma-remind ano yung lesson that nothing can separate me from the love of God. And that always encourage me, hantod ka ron, nakatabang na siya sa kuha. So imagine, if there's no Mount Calvary, my childhood will be, karang walay, walay extra nga maayong nga influence nga muabot sa kong kinabuhi. There will be no uh, good spiritual teachers nga mag-assist sa akong parents sa pag-train sa mga. Now, the Bible said in Proverbs 22.6, Diyan nata abrihan, ako lang i-quote, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That lesson, wala gin nag-depart sa kuwa. And until now, nakatabang siya sa kuwa. It always, incur- nag- always siya nag-encourage sa kuwa that nothing can separate me from the love of God. And I learned that. Tato na ako sa junior church. So I consider my childhood would be boring, no children's program, no Bible knowledge, no good influence, no good teachers, na magtabang sa akong parents, mag-assist sa akong parents sa pag-train sa mga to do what is right. Now, if there's no Mount Calvary, my childhood, there'll be no learning about heavenly stuff. There'll be no learning about spiritual stuff. When I was a child, nung nag-attend ko aning a church, I learned to tithe. Muna, karon bisan, bisan uh, older na ko, I still give my tithes. Karon nga older na ko, it's not hard for me nga maghatag sa kong tithes. Because I learned that when I was young. I learned that when I was still a child. And I believe, no matter unsa kada ko ang kwarta, nga nasa ko ang kamot, it will not be hard for me to give my tithes. Because I learned that when I was young. And dako kayo na siyang advantage. Because I've seen the blessings of God financially. I've seen the blessings of God in any other area sa ko ang kinabuhi. Because I learned to tithe. To give tithe. Okay? Itong bata pa ko. Not only that, I learned to read my Bible. I learned to karing magkaroon ng devotion or devotional life. I learned how to pray. When I was a child, I learned to give out tracts. Itudlo ami maghatag og tracts. Ma-remember na ako, bata pa ko, na isa ka staff sa Mount Calvary, kauban sa kong igsuon, gidala mi niya sa, sa Esperanza. Layo ka ito. Nagbit-bit mi og isa ka maleta. Dilip, sanina ang sulod, but puro tracks. And by the end of the week, katutanan nga tracks na hurot na maghatag dito sa Esperanza. That was a blessing. That was a uh, uh, moment so kinabuhi where well, I learned to give out tracts and not be ashamed sa pulong sa gino. Not be ashamed sa gospel. Now, be, uh, because of Mount Calvary, I learned to witness. I learned to share the gospel. Now, remember na ako itong first time di ko nga nag-witness. Napa ko sa junior church. Okay? Bata pa ko ato. Dili pa ko teenager ato. I think I was 11 years old at that time. First time ko nga nag-witness. Akong giwitnisan, mas older sa kuwa. Siguro he was 12 years old. Eh, one year older sa kuwa. And that's the first time nga nag-open ko sa akong Bible. Unya, nag, nag, nag-witness. Naigamay nga, naigamay nga karing kakulba ba? Sa kuang, so ang kasing-kasing, katong time nga nag-share ko siya. But I gave my best. And sad to know, wala to siya na-save at nga time. Kaya mo gitong pinaka-first mo pag-explain. Unya mo, murag, Karabi tong, sa kakulba ni mo, ma-blackout ka, wala ka ba lang sa niya, nagkatag-katag na lang yung But that moment, I learned how to witness. So, katong nga time, na-consider na ko itong ulaw ka nga moment, but because of that, naningkamot ko mag-study, naningkamot ko nga, nga makatoon mag-witness. So, all those experiences helped me. All those things na tunan ako when I was a child because of this church. That's why I consider my childhood nga walay learning about spiritual stuff kung wala ang Mount Calvary. So that's why I, I thank God for this church. That's why I thank God nga na Mount Calvary Baptist Church. So what if there's no Mount Calvary? My childhood will be boring. 
no children's program, no Bible knowledge, wala akong verse siguro na memorize, wala good influence, wala uh, good teachers that will assist my parents sa pag-train sa mga, no learning, nothing. Okay? Di siya ako ba lumag-tide, siya ako ba lumag Bible, di ako ba pray all those stuff, spiritual things. Possible, wala, dili, dili na ako na mahimo. Dili ko kabalo ang sao na siya, siguro until karon kung wala ang Mount Calvary. Let's proceed sa number two. My teenage years or adolescent uh, adolescent stage. What if there's no Mount Calvary? Unsa ka nga ang uh, teenage life? I believe if there's no Mount Calvary, my teenage years will be sinful. Will be wicked. I will karang I will be easily karing magyield sa temptation if there is no Mount Calvary. Now, I did, I'm not saying that I lived a perfect uh, karang teenage years. Yes, uh, nahulog ko sa pipila ng mga temptation when I was a teenager and then dagag mga things na naghihimo na ako na wala na kay Maya sa Diyos. Pero saan na nakagwala ang Mount Calvary? Basing mas daghan pa ko mga things na naghihimo nga di makahimaya sa Diyos. Maybe there, there will be things nga akong himuon nga kung asa uh, mag-destroy sa kuang kinabuhi. So if there is no Mount Calvary, I believe my teenage years will be sinful. Not only that, I believe my teenage years will be empty. Because as a teenager, uh, most of my encounter na ko, most teenager my encounter na ko, they're looking for something nga mag-satisfy sa laha. They're looking for something nga nga kung asa mo ragma ma feel tong void of emptiness sa ilang kasing-kasing now kung wala ang Mount Calvary Baptist Church my teenage years not only will be sinful but it will be empty emotionally spiritually maybe uh na i think sa okay na buhi nga pangitaon ako ba para lang mag-satisfy sa kuha dagag mga teenagers karon they are looking to be recognized they're looking to be recognized. But thank God na I Mount Calvary, I learned in Ephesians chapter 2. Ako ang basahan, Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 4. You're looking to be recognized? Now look at this verse. But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love, wherewith He loved us. I believe ang just nag-recognize si mo. Kaya ngun siya din he. Ang iyang great love, okay? Moto ang uh, ang klase ng love nga naa sa Dios nga naa sing kasing kasing towards imo God na recognize kaniya okay. So if you're looking for recognition if you're looking to be recognized na ang Dios Now if wala ang Mount Calvary dili na ko ni ma-learn dili ko maka-feel nga ma-recog na na-recognize ko sa Dios kung wala ang Mount Calvary Now some of the teenagers are looking to be accepted in Ephesians chapter 2 dinhi gyapon Let's look at verse number 12. They're looking to be accepted. Muna, mangita silang mga barkada nga mo'y mo accept sa ilaha. Okay. Possible sa ilahang panimalay, they're not accepted. Possible sa ilang mga uh, neighbors, they're not accepted. Or maybe sa ilang relatives, they're not accepted. Maybe some of their classmates, they're not accepted. So they're looking sa mga barkada nila nga. Although, they're bad influence, but gina-accept siya, so dito siya nag -stick. So a lot of teenagers are looking for acceptance. They're looking to be accepted. But look at this first. In chapter 2, verse number 12 in the book of Ephesians, that at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Monay, kahim tang ni mo before kana save. You're a stranger, the house of You're a... Uh, you're an enemy, you're an alien, you're without God, you're, you're ungodly. Katong wala, pa ka, wala pa ka na save. Well, verse number 13, but now in Christ Jesus, katong time nga na-meet ni mo si Jesus Christ, katong time nga nagkaroon kag personal relationship, diha kang Jesus Christ, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Jesus Christ broke that wall na dati stranger ka sa Diyos, but now you are accepted in God's 
family. You're looking for acceptance, you can find it in Jesus Christ. And that's what I learned sa Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Na, na God is willing to accept you kung ikaw willing mag-accept sa iya as your personal Savior. Kung mag-believe ka siya, ibutang ni mong faith ni mo diya Jesus Christ. God will welcome you, will accept you sa iyang family. So, uh, you become a child of God. In, in uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, bang sa Bible, Galatians chapter 3, verse 26, the Bible said here, For ye are all the children of God. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So the key that you'll be accepted by God is through the Lord Jesus Christ kung magbutang kasi ang faith diha sa iha. But you'll find acceptance diha sa Diyos no matter who you are, no matter unsang past ni mo, no matter unsang mga mistakes nga nabuhat ni mo, God will accept you. So as a teenager, some of us, or uh, uh, most of the teenagers are looking to be recognized. God has already recognized you. He gave His Son for you. Uh, he, he loved you with a great love in the Bible. And all, uh, if you're looking for acceptance, God is there to accept you. Willing kanya dawaton sa iyang family. If you're willing to believe and put your faith in Jesus Christ. Now, a lot of teenagers are looking for attention put. Eh, daghan kay mga teenagers nga mga papansin kaayo. That's why uh, sa karon sa social media nga, nga realm or nga time, uh, sa mga plantaw ka sa sa Sa, sa social media, or maybe sa Facebook, and you'll see a lot of teenagers doing dumb things just to, to get attention. Uh, dumb things, like mga funny things or any things, crazy things. They're doing stuff just to get attention. But you know what? You, God, you can get uh, attention diha sa Diyos. Karang attention mga pangita, you can find it. Diha kang Jesus Christ. And that's what I learned because of Mount Calvary Baptist Church, Jeremiah. Add to sa Jeremiah. Chapter number 29. Jeremiah 29 and verse number 12. Now, Bible din here. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse number 12. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And you see Jesus Christ. Kung ikaw mo tawag diya sa Diyos, you go and pray diya sa iya. Ingo siya, I will listen. I will hearken unto you. You have God's attention. You have the attention of God. Kaya kung mag-pray ka, ingo siya, maminaw siya sa imo ha. I remember na ako'y barkada, nga karabi tong uh, na kay ginaagian, yung gusto ka mag-share sa iya niya. Grabe ni mo share, paglingin ni mo, wa day nagapaminaw sa imo ha. You don't have His attention. But God, every time you pray, English, I will hearken unto you. I will listen unto you. English says in Matthew 7, 7, Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. You have God's attention. Tanawa uh, sa Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3. And in the Bible, The Lord had appeared unto me, uh, The Lord had appeared of old unto me, saying, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Imagine that, ang Diyos nagigugma si Mua with an everlasting love. Nga, yeah, mayingon ka nga wala ang attention sa Diyos si Mua? I don't think so. The Bible is telling otherwise. God's attention na asa tua. He's willing to answer our prayers. He's willing to listen every time nga mag, mag-pray ka. And I learned that here sa Mount Calvary Baptist Church. So kung wala ang Mount Calvary Baptist Church, I believe my teenage years will be empty. I'll be looking for attention. I'll be looking to be recognized. I'll be looking to be accepted. But because there's Mount Calvary Baptist Church, all those things, nakita na ko kay Jesus Christ. I found the satisfaction na kong ginapangita kay Jesus Christ. Now, as a teenager, normal na po sa isa ka teenager nga mangita og lingaw, looking for fun. Di ba? Kasa muna, kasagaram teenagers, mag- Maghimo sila mga daotan kay mora nang way nga nga makakita sila linga or maybe the the uh, attack someone or karang magyagayagaan nilang isa because it's fun or maybe uh, ganahan sila magsabay sa barkada kay it's fun most of the teenagers are looking for fun now let me tell you money akong na learn sa Mount Calvary Baptist Church and here's the real fun 1 John chapter 1 1 John 
chapter 1 and verse number 1. I'm sorry, 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 3. 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 3. And I'm going to the Bible. 1 John 1, 3. The Bible said, That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. You want to be joyful or you want your joy to be full? You can find that kung naakay proper fellowship and walk with Jesus. And you have proper uh, fellowship and walk with Jesus. You have proper fellowship with other Christians. And if you have proper fellowship with other Christians, I believe your joy will be full. And that's the real fun. Kung nakay tarong na relationship diha sa Diyos. Na kung wala pa ni mo na experience ni, kung wala pa ka na experience of fullness of joy, every time mag spend time ka sa gino, man, you better make progress sa mong devotional life. I can still remember, there are times I'm just alone, but my joy is full because I spend time with my Savior. I spend time with the Lord Jesus Christ. I catch myself smiling at times. I catch myself being thankful at times. I catch myself being joyful when I'm bisan pag ako raisa because I found joy sa akong fellowship with Jesus Christ. And as a teenager, kung wala kay tarong na fellowship kang Jesus Christ, then you'll be looking for fun somewhere else. But thank God for Mount Calvary Baptist Church na gituduan kong magkaroon ng tama nga walk diha sa Diyos. And I don't have to look for fun somewhere else. I don't have to do wrong para lang malingaw. I can have fellowship with Jesus. Now, if there is no Mount Calvary, I'll be looking for something to satisfy me. But because of Mount Calvary Baptist Church, I learned the satisfaction only comes from having a close walk with Jesus Christ. Now, if you haven't found satisfaction yet, yes, save na ka, you better decide to get close to the house of Jesus. Because only through Him, you'll find the fullness of joy. Now, what if there's no Mount Calvary? My teenage years will be sinful. My teenage years will be empty. Not only that, my teenage years, those will be years na kung asa puno kaayo o decisions na kung asa mahaya na ko, mag-regret ko, the rest ako ang kinabuhi. But thank God, there's Mount Calvary Baptist Church na nag-care para sa mga young people. We have Sunday school classes Para sa youth. We have youth programs. We have youth activities. And those activities, those programs, nagi offer sa Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Naging part ko ato. And that helped me sa akong teenage years. I'm not saying I lived a perfect teenage life. But I've been, kapila ko na save into a lot of trouble because of this church. Because of the Things na ginatudlo ang nga church. Because in this church, you can learn the Bible. So what if there's no Mount Calvary Baptist Church? I believe my teenage years will be a life of regret. A life of regret. Now lastly, what if there's no Mount Calvary Baptist Church? Musa ka akong adulthood. What if there's no Mount Calvary Baptist Church? Well, I believe my adulthood, I could see myself date wrong. I could see myself marry wrong. If there's no Mount Calvary Baptist Church, I could see myself date wrong. I could see myself marry wrong. And I, I would have to carry that burden the rest of my life. Now, I may make it work, but I'll be proving that the rest sa kong kinabuhi. And that's not a good way to live your marriage life. Nga kinahanglan ni mo i-prove sa obang tao, kinahanglan ni mo i-prove sa imong mga, sa imong mga anak someday, nga, nga, uh, you can get away for doing wrong. 
That's not a good way to live your marriage life. So if there's no Mount Calvary, I believe my marriage will be different. I can see myself date wrong and marry wrong. Now, karon, no father na ko. If there's no Mount Calvary Baptist Church, I don't know ano sa may tabo sa kung anak. I don't know how to raise him para sa Dios. I don't know how to train him to love God and serve people. I don't know what will I do kung wala ang Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Now, to sum it all up, to summarize everything, I'm just saying that I am blessed because of Mount Calvary Baptist Church. God has used this church to help me sa kong kinabuhi. Now, the church may have a different impact sa mong life. I don't know. But sa kong personal experience, and this is my personal testimony, this church is a blessing. I am not saying that Mount Calvary Baptist Church is a perfect church or we have perfect people. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is God has used this church to help not only me, I believe a lot of families, a lot of people, a lot of young people, a lot of children. I believe God has used this church to help a lot of lives. There is a city in it. And I believe a lot of you will agree with that. Yes, this is not a perfect church. Yes, we don't have perfect people. But this church is a blessing. Now, I'm not saying that this is the best church in the world. Well, for me, it is. But I'm not saying that this is the best church in the world. But there's no other church I would rather be than Mount Calvary Baptist Church. I spend most of my life here. Since, imagine since 2000, I spent most of my life here. Every week, na ako dito sa church. Niabot na guys sa points ng nabibigyan sa church na yuko nagpuyo. And now I'm working dito sa church. Most of my life, na dito sa Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Now, this church, na si Daku ng apart sa kuwang kinabuhi. And I'm so glad na Mount Calvary Baptist Church is part of who I am. It's part of me. I'm just saying, I love this church. I really love this church. And I am thankful for this church. I am thankful for the people of this church. Happy anniversary, Mount Calvary. Let us pray. Father in heaven, salamat kay Gino. Karun nga gabi. Lord, thank you. Nga mo ang church na kaabot 21 years. And the uh, Lord, this uh, past 21 years, I've seen a lot of blessing, you know. Sa karing nga simbahan, tagang mga lives gonna change, tagang mga families tatabangan, you know, because of this church. And Lord God, it makes me uh, have a thankful heart, you know. Uh, thank you, Lord, and I'm Mount Calvary Baptist Church. Thank you for all the people, all the members of this church. Father, thank you. For using Pastor Doug o giyang family, Lord God. I build ni sa ginoong uh, simbahan wherein we could serve God, you know. We could uh, do things para si mo through this church. Father, I'm just thankful. And I'm just blessed, oh God. Paong sa ni magigamit ang Mount Calvary sa kong kinabuhi. Lord, I know there's a lot of families and a lot of people na mag-testify, you know. Lord, help us not to stop there. Help us, Lord, to reach more people para si mo. Lord, use this church continually to help a lot of families, a lot of people, you know, there is among you that. And Lord, I pray to keep this church growing, oh God, and keep this church, Lord, kung asa, Lord, na kami sa stage, you know, nagahatag, o glory si mo, you know, dili, dili, Lord, ayaw tuguti nga, mabot ni sa point, Lord God, nga dili, naka ma-please, you know, sa among ginahi mo ang nga church. Lord, help us, Lord, as members of this church not to do anything that will destroy the name of this church. Not to do anything that will destroy, Lord God, your name through this church. Help us to do everything we can to be a blessing, you know, sa karing nga church. 
Father, salamat sa tanan. Bless all our members. Help us to enjoy this our anniversary, O God, even though wala may church service, O God. Manginaan po na mo, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, and again, happy anniversary.